Welcome back, uh, YouTube friends and mRNA. Um, I'm here in my uh, dining room uh, and uh, we're going to talk about sketchbooks today. Sketchbooks are really important for artists and um, I'll show you some of mine. Okay, so here's our discussion on sketchbooks. Um, here's an old sketchbook that's pretty ratty from back when, well, must have been almost when I was in college. And uh, in it, um, a lot of times what you use sketchbooks for is to come up with ideas, you know, or to write down ideas as you have them, things for uh, uh, different projects, things like that. And so, yeah, this was, yeah, this is quite a while ago. And so, um, and uh, so you make notes, you uh, kind of can use a sketchbook as uh, ideas for, or it's, it's like developing your own visual vocabulary, um, ideas on um, different projects uh, that you may have going on. You're always trying to think of, you know, at least four or five projects ahead of time. And so you're always developing those and you, you're trying to work through those. And a lot of this sketchbook was developing projects. And so, you know, I spent a lot of time thinking about how things are drawn, how things should be um, put together. And so a lot of this sketchbook is, is just working out ideas and problems in, in, in art. And so I'll just go through a few pages of this and uh, you can see you know there's different qualities you know some work out some don't sketchbook is is there for you to experiment there for you to to really look at what you're interested in and and how can you do those things in different ways and so th these drawings have different feel feelings to them you know they're they're some are drawn loose some are drawn quickly um, some just have lots of thumbnails on um, posing people or posing your subject and uh, it, it just uh, gives you a chance to do a lot of experimenting. And so a little bit about sketchbooks. It, it, the first thing you want to do is you have to buy a sketchbook, okay? Uh, the, this is a um, 8 by 10 sketchbook. Um, some are smaller, some are bigger. It's, it's you want to get something that you can use and that you always have with you. Um, I like the bigger sketchbook. Okay, here's another one. This is a different one a few years later. And so um, in the sketchbook, I'll keep lots of pictures. Um, it, you can use it like a scrapbook. Uh, of different things that I have going on. This was idea for a painting. Uh, this is uh, my family and uh, and so we're trying to come up with, um, I was thinking of Van Gogh and the potato eaters and so I was, you know, we're, I was putting something together with that. And uh, let's see, I've got some things marked here in this one I think. Uh, yeah, here's very different feels to these drawings. This is uh, more refined, more more involved, and this is just a quick sketch and a um, bunch of notes. Um, you always want to try to think of a time when you can work your sketchbook every week. You want to set a time every week. My time that I set was um, Sunday and, and very often I'd bring my sketchbook to church, taking notes, the church notes, but I'd also draw people that were sitting in front of me. Um, until I became too much of a distraction, um, and then I would start bringing pictures in of people to draw. So here are those. That's a few older ones. Let's try a newer one. A little bit newer and so in this one you can see I'm still taking notes at church but now I have pictures that I, I brought along to draw from now, let's look at these so these are all you know drawings sometimes I would take um, you know I take my sketchbook to meetings 
at work and things like that, and I would draw while I'd listen at the meeting, you know, and take notes um, with the meeting. And so these are all just kind of that type of thing. These are former students of mine. And so I, I take a lot of pictures of, you know, I, I do take my camera with me also. And now that we have phones that take um, good pictures, um, you, you always have a camera with you. So you take pictures of people around you all the time. You can use those pictures later to, to draw from, which uh, is always fun. Um, these are former students. This is a this was a painting that I was working up an idea for, uh, a hurdler, and um, this is a former student, uh, Phoebe again, and uh, I had a lot of pictures of her, so she was easy to to do a lot of drawings from. So each each set of drawings, you know, it's it depends what you're trying to do, what your mood is that day. And uh, sometimes you're just drawing for ideas. Sometimes you're drawing for practice. Practice is a big thing with uh, keeping a sketchbook. Um, let's see. Let's look at a few others here. You know, let's skip to the back. So, yeah. And for me, I, I use pens. And so I, I use, uh, I have this Pilot Pen. This is an 07, and I have an 05, which is a very, so this is thicker, this is a little bit thinner line. And so I'll use those two. Sometimes, uh, you know, Pilot has this um, felt tip pen, you know, fine tip that will give you different marks. Some people I know, um, I, I ended up, um, having a group of people at church that uh, were art friends and we'd all kind of sit together and we'd all be sketching on something different. Um, some of my friends would use pencil, some would use uh, um, uh, colored pens or colored pencils to while they're sketching and, and listening to the church sermon. You know, some people that are creative have to keep their hands busy in order to listen well. And I just found that I do better at listening when my mind is active. Um, and, and it's a little bit of multitasking, but this, this calms me so I can listen and hear things. And so these are some of the notes from sermons. And so let's see, I have, this is a more recent book, you know. And so if you look at this, you know, this is a different, very different, more of a scribble drawing compared to this, which is just barely gotten started and not very well refined. And, and uh, one of the things you'll learn as an artist is you never show your bad work. So don't look at that. You know, I, I, you know this one's better. This is a, a picture I found of Alberto Giacometti. He's a, 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 and he would do these interesting scribble paintings that I really enjoyed. And so I did a painting of him, and uh, and so you know it just varied. On sometimes I do more figurative. You know it it just depends how I was feeling that day. And so this was setting up a time every week to make sure I had a chance to create art because sometimes life gets so busy. You have kids, you uh, have a job, you have lots of responsibilities. For a lot of you guys at school, you know, you have other courses that you're taking and uh, things things just get, eat, your time just gets eaten up. And, and so you have to find a time every week to draw. And uh, sometimes I would draw after school. Um, you know, it, it's just, if you have your sketchbook with you all the time, if you're, you, you sit down and you have a moment and you just have a moment to, to kind of decompress, um, you know, you pull out your sketchbook and you draw. So these are just some practice drawings in the sketchbook. And I'll just skim through some of these. You know, sometimes there, there's, you know, study of feet. You know, some of those are fun. Let's 
So, yeah. So I just wanted to show you some of my sketchbooks from throughout the years. You know, when you, um, usually it, it takes me about a year to get through a sketchbook. So if it takes you longer to do that, don't worry about it. You know, it's not about trying to get something filled up quickly. It's about exploring your art and really thinking about what you're doing and how you're doing it and how you can, you know, some of it's about communication, um, building those communication skills. Some of it's about building those drawing skills. You know, thinking about the creative process is is always that wasn't as good those you know so you have some drawings that turn out well some drawings that turn out poorly now this is an interesting drawing this was uh my grandfather and it was my first sketch of him and let's see here's the picture i had to to sketch from um and uh you can see that this is really blurry you can hardly see anything and so I did like three or four sketches until <clears throat> I got a good one. This is just my first try um, and uh, trying to sketch it. This is uh, my great-grandmother. Um, I think this was like her senior picture when she uh, gradu graduated from high school. So again, you draw people you know sometimes you find photos in magazines and you just use those and you throw those in your sketchbook and you use those to draw from. So, you know, you have lots of stuff you have crammed in your sketchbook. That's why my sketchbook, um, the binding of my sketchbooks are usually kind of broken up. You know, I have to tape them back together again like these. You know, I'd, I'd stuff all kinds of stuff in here and it would just be really packed full of things. Uh, Let's see. So, yeah. Just, you know, sometimes I would try to do really strong contrast. Sometimes I'd do a little something a little gentler. It, it just depended on what how things are going that day. And so, let's see. Let's try another sketchbook here. Now, this is one I've been doing recently, uh, this past year. And so a lot of these photos I um, used on Pinterest. You know, and I'm not really going to sell anything, you know, and so I just find photos of people. Um, I, I, you want photos that have good directional light. That makes drawing a lot easier. That helps you get um, interesting contrast and a feeling of light on the subject. You know, ugh, that one's ugly. That one's not working. You know, these aren't too bad. So in this sketchbook, lately, instead of um, doing a lot of note taking and things like that, I've changed to doing just practice drawing. So these are all just practice drawings, practice, um, you know, creating different feelings of line, you know, um, just trying to come up with different ways of, and, and just improving my drawing skills. You know, um, the, the mark of a good artist is a person who's constantly practicing drawing skills. You know, some drawings work out better than others, but you, you know, you're, you're practicing seeing, you're practicing measuring, all those things, and in, in, uh, what are you trying to do? So yeah, here's one where this is a rough and scruffy, and this is more gentle and soft, you know. Uh, and so you always want to try to push yourself in different directions uh, to make, uh, you, you know, and it just improves your skills on what you can do and how you can handle things. Here's uh, different drawings. Yeah, here's a little softer, very still high contrast, but this is uh, a little rougher. So these are all recent drawings that I've been doing last last few weeks, or well, actually months. This is probably a few months old now uh, of drawings I've been working on, and I've been doing a lot of just portrait heads. 
Um, I think um, I'll start doing more figurative things. Um, portrait heads, I find, are just real calming for me. And, and I, I just uh, could spend days just doing this type of stuff. You know, this, this is just, you know, I don't have to think real hard to do a portrait head. Um, I, I just, uh, it, it, it just comes, you know, a little more natural, a little, a little freer, uh, and, and things just work out better, you know, it, it just, you know, this is, um, this would be something easy for me. Um, doing a full figure, I'd have to do a whole lot more measuring. It would take more time. So all these are like 20 minute, 30 minute drawings at the most. That's all the time I get um, at church or or before church, you know, if I get there early. You know, it's, uh, you know, that's all the time I, I give myself is to do all these are just very short, very quick sketches. Okay, so let's, uh, if you're interested, let's try doing a drawing together. Here's a picture of a former student I have, and uh, this is just a profile. Profiles are generally a lot easier, um, but uh, let's just go over it real quick again one last time. So, sketchbooks. You need, if you want to be a good artist, you need to have a sketchbook. Absolutely have to have a sketchbook. Okay? You need to work in your sketchbook. Critical. It's just, you know, you're never going to advance in your art unless you're constantly sketching and working ideas and, and uh, you know. So what you're doing here in a sketchbook is you're, you're working out and you're working on your visual vocabulary. Um, on, on how to draw parts and things like that. And, uh, you know, so remember to always take your sketchbook with you, always. Sketchbooks are also a great way to do, it. they're really good for as a warm up before you start doing an actual large drawing. It's always good to yank your sketchbook out and, and just do a quick sketch. 15 minutes, limit yourself, don't spend too much time doing it. Um, you know, so sketchbooks help you remember things, they, they help you express ideas, uh, they, they help you reflect on, on what you're doing as an artist and where you're going. And, and it's just, uh, you know, so you, you're working out projects, you're working out styles, you're working out topics of, of art. And so if I look at this now, now um, a lot of my former students, I start this in fifth grade. I, I show them how to map out a head. And so when I look at this face here, um, there's certain things I, I want to see. So if, uh, if you'd like to, go ahead and take a screenshot of this. And, uh, and you can draw along with me. I'm hoping the lighting is okay for you. Uh, okay, so I'm going to take a pen. So I'm going to map this out. So... I look at a face, the eye is halfway up. So the distance from here to here is the same distance from here to here, plus hair. So the hair always creates a little more volume. Now this distance can change if the mouth is open, she's making a big smile or doing something with her jaw. So this jaw would, the, the distance here would change. So you know where the eye goes right off the bat, okay? The other distance you want to keep in mind is the distance from the front of the face to the back of the head. And you divide that in half, and that's right where your ear goes. How about that? So the ear, and you can't see it here because uh, she's got all of her hair kind of covering up, but you can see her little um, ear, earring there. Um, so that's so you want to keep those measurements in mind. And so if you understand measurements in measuring a face, a face becomes easy. It's no big deal. It's not real hard. So how do you decide where the nose goes? Ah, here's another measurement. So the distance from the eyebrow to the bottom of the nose is thirds. So this distance is 
one half. This is one one third. Okay, so one third from oops, I didn't get that very straight. Okay, so one third from here to here to the eyebrow to the top of the head. So that helps you place where the bottom of the nose is going to go. So when I start out a drawing, um, let's see, I'm going to use my 05 pen. And it's going to give me a little finer marks. So when I start out a drawing, I want to just kind of roughly draw where this head's going to go. And she's got her head that goes back like this, okay? So that gives me, that helps me stay on the page. If I start and just do a contour line drawing and just work my way around the drawing, what happens is um, you always end up going off the page. This will help you stay on the page. Now this may be a little big for what I'm going to do, but we'll, we'll get it to work. So the first thing I'm going to do is I know halfway here is going to be the eye, right? Now an eye is nothing more than a capital A on its side. This is uh, drawing a portrait 101, okay? So in the part of the eye that I'm going to draw is everything from the brow to down here. So your whole eye fits into, your eyeball actually is that big from here to here, to, the, to your um, bone in your cheek to the bone in your eyebrow, okay? So then the other thing I, I would draw would be the angle of this nose. So I want to try to get the same angle of the nose as I have here. Yeah, I should be out a little more, right? Just to get that correct. And now I know the nose is going to end up one third down. Where's my third line? Third, third, third. So that's about the right distance. So I know the nose is going to end up down here. And I'm drawing this light. I always start out light and I'm just kind of mapping out the structure of the face. Uh, you know what? I'm thinking this is probably a little farther down. See? Now, if I don't get it right, I can easily change it. Not a problem. So I'm just going to change that a little bit. And this is just a practice drawing. I'm not worried about where I'm going with this very much. You know, I'm, I, I'm not, it's not a big deal if I don't get this looking exactly like the photo. Okay, so the mouth comes down and it's this little triangle shape. See that triangle shape? Now notice, notice that the upper lip usually sticks out further than the lower lip, but on her, it's almost even if I draw a line straight down. But generally, the upper lip sticks out past the lower lip. And that looks good. So I'm trying to get these angles right. See this angle here? I'm trying to get that to look right. Now, notice that I'm going off my circle here just a little bit. Not a big deal. You know, this is only a guide. This is only to get me in the ballpark, get get my players going. Now let's see. So the distance, oops, top of the head needs to be a lot bigger. Okay. So which would mean the back of the head needs to be a lot bigger. And she has all this fun hair that, you know, we can do. And so it's, uh, and I'm just trying to get the general players of everything working here. Where does that hair go? Kind of goes like this, doesn't it? And this folds underneath. She's got all this really fun ropey stuff that comes down, you know, and her bottom of her earlobe is down here with her little shiny thing. Yeah, okay. Now, um, this kind of maps out everything. This makes 
the rest of the drawing go a lot easier. Once I have everything kind of placed and mapped out, you know, I, I can adjust, you know, if, if I don't have this angle quite right, this can come out a little further, you know, so I can make small adjustments as I go here. Now, I can also put in some of the muscle structure. I can put in the little highlights. I know there's a shadow here. So I can just kind of indicate where some of these things are on the face. And that brow comes out maybe a little bit further. And I'm trying to look at shape. So I'm always looking at shape. And let's move that just a little bit. I have, she's got these really beautiful high cheekbones I want to work on. And then she has this shadow here. Do you see that dark shadow that happens in here? And I'm just going to put that in there. Ooh, and I want to put her hair wraps around her head. She's got really long, beautiful braided hair. And so her hair wraps around her head. And I don't know if I'm going to put these necklaces in right now. I think I'll just indicate where that collar is going to go a little bit. Yeah, so I kind of have it mapped out. So it's remembering these measurements. So third, third, third. Yep, that works. Halfway, the eye, halfway, halfway. Remember that. Now remember the ear is halfway back on the head. You know, and then you can just measure where it is across from the mouth. And I might want that down a little bit further. And we'll put it down here. See how easy that is to move? Just because I put marks on here doesn't mean that's where it's going to stay. You know, not a big deal to draw over the top of it. So now it's just a matter of, wow, now, now I can just have fun and start putting in some values. So this makes the drawing go a lot easier. It just goes quick. You know, and I can be expressive. Oop, there's a bit of a shadow here. So I'm trying to work out all these little different little shadows that happen. There's a shadow that happens on the eye right here. Do you see this? And I'm not necessarily drawing eyelashes. I could. You know, she's got these beautiful long eyelashes. But I want to draw the shadow that happens on the eyeball itself. And what that does is that gives me dimension. So I'm always looking to try to create volume, you know. And so what you're doing with the drawing is it, it, it's an illusion. You, you're trying to create something three-dimensional on a two-dimensional surface. And so you're trying to create this illusion of this person actually being on the surface of this paper. Which was kind of magical before photography. You know, now that we have cameras and stuff, you know, it's uh, people people aren't as odd struck with the drawing sometimes as they, they could be. But you want to start thinking about how you can make this drawing better than just the photo. Okay? Photo's great, nice, but I want this to be a work of art. And so I'm trying to decide am I going to go really strong with my values and, and mark making? I've got some very strong marks in here right now, you know, creating these little divots and shadows that are happening. Um, and, and sometimes I don't know, you know, it just depends. <laughs> this is kind of where you know, the, the mood is taking me. I can purposely draw this really with strong shadows, but sometimes... It's just a matter of, oh, she's got this nice curve here. I want to try to get that curve of that shape. And there's a bit of a shadow that happens here. Now, I have to be careful with my crosshatching. If I go too far and get too dark, then I have to make other things darker, and it just makes it a lot harder. Okay, so this is the 05 pen. So notice how the lines are a lot softer. They're not as thick as like it, the 07 pen here. I can get a lot stronger 
and get these shadows to really start working for me really quickly. Now I'm just doing a general cross hatching. I could do a scribble to add a different feel in here if I want to. Ooh, I like this shadow back here. It's got a really, really nice strong shadow back here. With that hair. And for me, this is just fun. This is doodle. Okay. Some people may think this is that, you know, something really serious. Nah, I'm just, I'm just enjoying myself. She's got all these braids that create this cross hatching. See, I'm just making X's. X's, X's, X's. And that kind of creates that feeling of braids. And so once I get some X's made, I can put a value over the top of it because I know this is much darker as it falls into that shadow there. Yeah. And so, and then this is much very dark so I can go right over the top of those X's and create a shadow in top. Yeah, and I see if this makes a little more shadow. Now how fast you make a mark with a pen will also determine how thick the line is. Okay, switch back to the 05. I want to be gentle and soft on the face because she's got this beautiful skin tone here. I just love this is really nice. And I'm looking for muscle structure. So she's got a little there's a muscle that goes up around the, the mouth here. And I'm just trying to and it's very subtle and soft. I know it's there just because I, I've studied the anatomy of the face quite a bit. And so I know to look for these different shadows to create a feeling of that muscle structure. Oh yeah, she's got more, she's got a bit of a highlight up here. Oh, you know, I think that hair is gonna be a little taller. Looks like I'm gonna end up going off the page here after all. Well, that's okay, I'm not worried about it. It's got this nice long forehead. And so I'm just, I'm getting too dark here. This is a highlight here and it shouldn't be a shadow. So I'm kind of working myself into a corner that I don't want to do. So that means I have to make the rest of the face a little bit darker. Which is okay, because she has this darker skin complexion. And I want this shadow right here to be fairly strong, because that's going to help make dimension to, for that eye. And I want to be careful underneath the eye here. I don't want to get this too strong. I want to soften that a little bit. Now, if she was an older person, I'd probably not a big problem, you know. Okay, and I know there's a bit of a shadow here right in the cheek. You know, where the jawbone fits in, so the jaw kind of comes through here, and the cheekbone comes through here, and it creates this little shadow right here. Sometimes in church, I get myself into trouble because uh, um, I have a tendency to be a little aggressive when I'm drawing. And you can probably hear that. And usually the person sitting in front of me hears that and they tell me to knock it off. And I usually just go get up and sit somewhere else then. Because I don't want to be a distraction. 
Yeah, this is going to be darker. That's not as bright as that. So I'm looking at values. I'm looking at value shape. I'm looking at highlights. I'm looking at highlight shape. I'm just having fun here. So she's got these braided hair that comes down and it folds over the top of itself. Now I can take my time and do these very carefully or you know I can get pretty aggressive with these. And, and this just can take a lot of time fooling around. So I want you to try working in your sketchbook because uh, you can watch somebody draw and paint all your life and never learn how to do it. You have to pick up a pencil, you have to pick up a paintbrush and start doing it yourself. That's how you're really going to learn. And that's why a lot of artists will say, well, I'm a self-taught artist. It's because, yeah, you have to be self-taught. You have to show yourself. You have to figure out how to do this yourself. Whenever you're doing a drawing, a painting, it's problem solving. You're problem solving these values. You're problem solving how you lay the marks down. You know, are you going to get scribbly with your marks? Or are you going to be real accurate and careful? It's up to you. You know, what, what are, is your particular mood as you're drawing these? Okay, I need a darker pen here. This is just taking too long. So what was that? This is about, what, 15 minutes now or so? You know, sometimes you get a uh, drawing completely done. Sometimes it's all farther you get. And she's got these braids that would take, you know, a bit of time trying to get working way all the way down all these braids. And uh, I'm not going to make you sit through that. So I hope you have fun. I, I want you to play around with drawing. Um, some of your drawings won't work. You know, big deal. Get over it. Don't beat yourself up. Some of your drawings are going to look great, and, and uh, it's going to be exciting. And that's the fun of drawing is is getting something that works. You know, trying to create a feeling of space, a feeling of light hitting your subject, a mood. Uh, you know, just um, uh, some sort of feeling of who the person is. See, I, now I wish I really kept that highlight there. That's one of the drawbacks of working with a pen is you can't go back and go, oh, let's erase that and start over again. You can do that with charcoal, which is um, what the most artists will learn to use. Um, I would avoid using pen because pen has a tendency to, um, all these dark values will start having a shine to it. And it's hard to see your... Your artwork, if if it's got um, reflections in it and, and shining at you, and so you know it, it just depends on the medium you're trying to use. So I like to use pen because I can get very dark, I can get very dramatic, and I can accentuate some of these lines, like this line. I can go back in. And, and define it a little better. Doesn't have to be the same thickness all the way around. And it just looks like you're very self-assured when you drew it. It's kind of faking it a little bit, but you know, you can see where I ended up. You know, like uh, this chin, I want this chin to be strong. So I'm just going over and making this line a little thicker than some of the other ones. And I want that to be thicker. And I'm just playing, you know, just having fun. So please get out something, even if it's not in a sketchbook, just, just get out a piece of paper, draw on it. Okay, it doesn't have to be a sketchbook, um, doodle wherever. You know, start 
trying something that is challenging, something that forces you to measure, something that forces you to really study what you're looking at. And that's why the figure is so good for that, because if, if I'm doing a flower, no one knows if I copied it or, or drew it correctly. If I'm drawing a figure, everybody knows what a figure looks like. And so if I messed up, it's obvious. And what that does is it forces you to get better. And that's the idea here, is we want you to be a very good artist. And one way to do that is to draw the human figure, draw portraits, draw um, hands, draw all those things. And I can show you how to do each one of those things. Each one of those has a set of measurements to help you do it. And it makes getting the face in proportion, everything working easy. I like easy. Okay, so let's, so let's you know, just work our way through this drawing. Well, there's a nice shadow here, so I'm just going to make this a deep shadow. And change the direction of my cross hatching. Now I could take ink and just dump it over the top of this, but what's neat about cross hatching is it helps create dimension sometimes. You know, having some of that paper show through gives you a little more dimension to the drawing just by the fact that you're using a cross hatching to do it. So you two friends, you know, enjoy yourself, um, Emma Renee. You know, I, I, you can do this kind of stuff. Um, feel free, and uh, and you know, just uh, enjoy what God has made. This is just really fun. So that's it. I'm going to continue my drawing, and you should too, and see what you come up with. God bless.